Hi, I'm Steph. I'm Bud. And we're here to start the conversation around diversity and inclusion in preparing you for the workplace. We all have different identities, from ones we privately feel to ones we present to the world. And you may feel like certain judgments are placed on you because of these identities, around your belief systems, your sexuality, appearance, or your behaviours. When preparing for the workplace, it's important to reflect on the different identities which you align with and think about how this will impact your experience in the workplace. It's important to feel a sense of acceptance with what you identify with, and diversity and inclusion allows this to happen. Diversity and inclusion is allowing for a space free of judgments and the stereotypes which are attached to what we align with, and it can bring forth a sense of belonging. Diversity and inclusion is key to business strategy and works to aid comfortable and supportive environments for employees. There are over 30 million people in the workforce in the UK. This is why it's important to learn about diversity and inclusion in context of the workplace especially. It also means that the workplace is a great access point for meaningful change and education around this topic. Looking at this number of people working in the UK, diversity is the difference of each of the 30 million people in work and how well their identities are represented on all levels of the workplace. While inclusion is more of the impact of diversity, mixing different people together to allow for a more productive, harmonious workplace. Diversity and inclusion aims to help disadvantaged groups and in terms of careers and the workplace, this means to create an equal playing field for all. You may be familiar with certain diversity and inclusion campaigns in the media. It's become an expectation for brands to use inclusive marketing. This can be shown when a brand uses diverse models in their campaigns, for example, and it's used to reflect their diverse consumer pool. Think how this impacts your customer experience and how you feel when you see a brand's marketing which is diverse or is not. If you don't feel represented by a brand, you may be less likely to use their products. This is why there's been a shift in marketing, to make sure it's inclusive, so that businesses can connect with more consumers, and this is why diversity and inclusion is key to business strategy. Apple, for example, have made steps in ensuring that all can be represented by their emojis. This shows the steps that they've taken towards inclusion for their consumers' experience. The relationship with diversity, inclusion and business is palpable. This is shown in the media, which has impacted our own lived experiences. There are also larger media movements which have impacted our experience, from Black Lives Matter to Me Too and Extinction Rebellion, which have all focused on helping disadvantaged groups who experience oppression. Businesses have set a new precedent in responding to these movements and referencing them in how they support the lived experiences of their employees and customers. To find out more, check out my short set, how the Black Lives Matter movement is inspiring employers. The government are also expected to respond to these movements. This all directly aims at helping disadvantaged groups. Research by McKinsey shows that companies which are diverse do better. Companies are looking to have more diverse teams as part of their business strategy. They want a diverse workforce to encourage diverse and innovative ideas through differing perspectives. Diversity and inclusion initiatives are influencing all sectors of business. Findings from the Credit Suisse Research Institute show that employing women in higher sectors of the business improves financial returns. This encourages gender diversity in all levels of the business and also helps end the pay gap. Businesses are aiming to make their teams more diverse. Recruiting with diversity and inclusion in mind is referred to as positive discrimination and is shown in the music industry by UKMusic.org, for example. As organisations are looking for diversity, being your own unique self is your selling point. You shouldn't see diversity and inclusion as being a box-ticking exercise. Organisations want people like you, so your experience is legitimate. Employers should want you to be your best self, and through an inclusive environment, this will happen. Unfortunately, there can be negative experiences associated with diversity and inclusion, so it's important to know your rights in regards to discrimination. Under the Equality Act, it is illegal to discriminate against any of these protective characteristics, such as age, gender, ability. This applies beyond the workplace too, and to everyone in Britain. Within the workplace environment, this law protects you from discrimination and helps ensure that it's a fair environment for everyone. When being recruited, you should expect that none of these characteristics would hold you back from being hired. The law protects you in being discriminated against throughout the recruitment process, such as with your CV submissions and job interviews. When writing your cover letter, don't shy away from your personal experiences, as it may highlight your suitability for the job. 
We have shown how important diversity and inclusion is to some organisations. So highlighting your understanding of this can make you stand out in a competitive job market, but make your own judgement on when this is appropriate. Under the law, there are different types of discrimination. Direct discrimination, indirect discrimination, harassment and victimisation. Direct discrimination occurs when you are treated less favourably due to a protected characteristic. This can be shown by an employer refusing to hire someone based on their disability for any reason. Like all the other forms of discrimination, this can be related to the employer's unconscious bias. Indirect discrimination. This can be less obvious than direct discrimination and it can be when a company policy or procedures may put you at disadvantage related to a protected characteristic. For example, your employer is requesting employees to return to work, but one of the employees has a health condition which makes them vulnerable to coronavirus. This is a situation which can be talked through, but by making this broad request, the employer is indirectly discriminating for health reasons. Indirect discrimination can be justified if the policy is proportionate and necessary, but in this instance it isn't if the employee can work from home. Harassment is an unwanted behaviour connected to a protected characteristic and can often make someone feel offended or degraded. Commonly, this is related to sexual harassment, where there is an unwanted sexual behaviour. But harassment can also show up as bullying, such as refusing to call someone who is undergoing the gender reassignment process by their correct pronouns. Victimisation. This has been treated poorly because you have complained or you've helped someone complain about discrimination in the workplace. If you have reported discrimination, victimisation under the Equality Act protects you against further discrimination. Do's and don'ts for handling a situation of discrimination in the workplace. Discrimination won't happen to everyone, but should this situation arise, you should know how to approach it. Do take action. If you've been a victim of discrimination or you've been a witness to it, do take action and report it. Although it can be intimidating, the workplace should be an inclusive environment for everyone and you have the right to complain against any situations which have made you feel uncomfortable. Do. Consider what you want out of the situation. Is it a change in organisational policy? Compensation? An apology? A review into the co-worker's conduct? Think this first and then act accordingly. If it is adjustments for your health or disability, do consider it's the employer's duty to make these adjustments for you. If the situation has been severe, consider going to court. The government can help you in this situation. To get more information on this, check out the takeaway at the end of the set. Don't rush the process. Learn about your options. It may be worth confiding in a colleague first and gain perspective on the situation. A tip is to find out who you can voice these concerns with when you're first starting a job. For smaller companies, they won't necessarily have a HR department, but if they do, this may be the first place you want to talk to. The organisation is likely to have a grievance procedure as well, so find this out and see how they advise you in approaching a situation of discrimination. Don't. Think that this incident will taint your experience with the organisation. There is help and support out there for you. Your employer is also responsible for the discrimination which has happened, even if it wasn't from them directly. This means that they are also liable for the conduct and as an additional responsibility for them to care for you. If you're on the other side and are being accused of discrimination, do be open-minded to the person's feelings and be accountable for your actions. Understand that your actions may have been due to your unconscious bias and focus on trying to dismantle said biases for the future. Do you question the organisation's commitment to diversity and inclusion? Before interviewing for an organisation, it may be worth looking up their commitment to diversity and inclusion. Some larger organisations publish data around the subject on how they uphold diversity and inclusion. Look at BT's comprehensive diversity and inclusion data on the takeaway page, as it's a great example of this. You can also question their commitment in your job interview too. At the end of an interview, it's always worth questioning the workplace environment of an organisation to understand how well you'd fit into the employee culture. Refer to the takeaway side for questions that you could ask. Do you let the employer know if you need adjustments for any reason, such as for your health or religious needs, for example? Your employer shouldn't directly ask you about this and you won't be required to inform them in the application process. But if you feel like you may need adjustments, it's worth letting them know. Diversity and inclusion is carving out new opportunities for all. I asked Miss Banks about her experience with diversity and inclusion in regards to the music industry. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. 
Do you feel like being labelled a female artist has constrained you or has it allowed you to stand out more in the music industry? I feel naturally it's been hard being a female um, in a male-dominated industry. Um, I'm not too fussed about the label itself, but in the same breath as well, it's crazy because sometimes I feel like you get a bit more attention as a girl if you're good, So, but it's a hard balance. You still have to work really hard. It's definitely got its pros and cons. What changes in the music industry have you experienced in terms of diversity and inclusion? Definitely more females are coming on board. I feel like the more women they see become successful in our field, the more it makes them want to go for their dreams. So it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There's more girls coming from our city, from up north, from everywhere. Um, and I feel like it's the same across the board, not just like with female rappers, but female DJs, uh, singers, producers, engineers, it's all growing. So it's getting much better and it's becoming much more diverse. Yeah, that's so great. Do you see that behind the screen as well, behind yeah, the stage? for sure. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. What we are often unaware of in regards to diversity and inclusion is unconscious bias. How well are you familiar with this term and concept? I'm going to ask you a few questions now. True or false? Unconscious bias isn't as harmful as conscious bias. False. Even if you're not aware of your biases, unconscious bias still affects your actions and behaviours towards others. Having a certain unconscious bias can still be harmful and can materialise as micro behaviours. This can show up by favouring someone over someone else or having negative body language towards them. It can affect job hiring and recruitment in the workplace. But this harm can go beyond the workplace and it can be just as harmful in everyday life. As unconscious bias is unconscious, you can't mitigate the effects of it. False. 98% of our brain function is subconscious, so it is difficult to mitigate the effects of unconscious bias yet it still can be helped. Many organisations have invested into unconscious bias training. This will involve exposing certain biases. This is important as unconscious bias can be harmful, so taking steps towards dismantling it is essential within the workplace environment. Unconscious bias goes beyond gender and race. True. Gender and race may be the only biases we can think of, however biases can run on all different levels. You can have biases over personality, the way someone dresses, the way they express themselves, their language ability, socioeconomic status, weight. To explore unconscious bias further, I caught up with Bacola, an expert in the diversity and inclusion space. I questioned her about this concept and how to become familiar with our own biases. So I've worked, I guess, in the DNI space informally for about seven years, but more formally in the last two, um, particularly focused in the advertising sector. And, um, you know, with my background in social mobility and my passion in advertising and that being very much the career path I took. Um, yeah, so I now find myself in the space where I'm doing a lot of workshops, a lot of training, a lot of facilitation and hosting conversations on this subject. We're here to explore unconscious bias <laughs> further. So starting off, what is unconscious bias? Okay, so I'm going to take it a step back first and kind of talk about bias as a whole. So, you know, bias, it's our conscious and unconscious prejudice um, against an individual or group. So based on their identity, and that's things like their physical attributes, such as gender, skin colour and age. Um, however, looking more focused into unconscious bias. So this is kind of our unintended people preferences. And these are formed by three key things. So it's our number one is our socialization. So that's kind of the area we grew up, grew up in, our family setting, kind of the things we were surrounded by. Our personal experiences is number two. And that's very much kind of, you know, the things we've gone through in life, the things, you know, the people we choose to love and spend time with. And then number three would be um, the representations within the media. And this is an area I'm particularly interested in because, like I said, I work in the advertising space. And so we really have an opportunity to change the narratives and bring more nuanced stories to represent more communities. Mm, definitely. What methods do you think can help familiarise yourself with your own biases? So today I'm going to highlight two. And um, the first one is the Harvard Implicit Bias Test. So this is available online. It's completely free. And again, it allows you just to really interrogate your bias and explore how it kind of shows up in different types of social identifiers. But it also kind of brings up some other stuff that you maybe wouldn't think um, when you think about bias. So even things around like weight and how people have a bias towards slimness versus kind of more heavier, heavy, heavier people. And so just a really interesting place to explore. But then number the other option I'd kind of recommend is something I like to call a bias mood board 
So this is something I've come up with. And I think, you know, using those three categorizations I said earlier around person experience, socialization and representation in the media, it's just a visual way to kind of put that in front of you to really help you in, in, interrogate your bias. So start with kind of pictures of kind of your family setting and how you grew up. Think about the schools you went to and the environment. Also think about the TV programs you've watched growing up. You know, for me, it was the likes of Neighbours and Home and Away, you know, EastEnders and things like that. And then again, it's down to kind of, you know, looking at all of that starts to help you really identify your bias and how it shows up. How can unconscious bias training be made most effective? So I think unconscious bias training is made most effective um, actually based on what you do after the workshop and the training. So I think those sessions are really great and they give you a lot of information. But I think reflective practice is necessary to really understand how it shows up in your own life and to do and to think about it in your own with your own experiences. Um, I also think it's really important to have conversations amongst your peers and amongst your family and friends to again, I think explore how bias shows up in the different ways it kind of, you know, has either hindered or kind of maybe blocked you in certain areas. And also how you can check your language and behaviours that kind of are based out of that bias. So I think it's about actually the interrogation you do after the workshop that is really gonna, what's going to make it really impactful amazing thank you so much for our time for cola that was really informative no thank you Derek, thank you so much thank you to summarize diversity and inclusion impacts the business and the individual the government protects you from all types of discrimination there are different ways to approach discrimination in the workplace unconscious bias affects everyone but it can be dismantled Diversity and inclusion will impact your experience in the workplace. Remember, businesses will want you, so be your best self and take your own stage. To continue your journey through these short sets, check out the What is Resilience set and discover your best self webinar. I've been Bud. I've been Steph. And thanks for joining us.